let me know when you're ready. I can wait. No, I'm ready. <laughs> I can, I can, okay. <laughs> I'm on your time. <laughs> All right. Talk to me about um, your position and with what group you're with. Uh, Julie Mack is the Community Solidarity Response Network of Toledo. We're uh, in a lot of ways functioning as like the Black Lives Matter arm in Toledo. And uh, we're committed to uh, e justice, equal justice under the law for everybody. For all lives matter, black lives will matter. And uh, we're at a point now where it's just sure. Yeah. Julian, talk to me about the reaction right now that you have, how you feel about everything going on right now revolving towards Well, it's... Uh, changing the power structure with law enforcement so that it truly benefits the people. Because right now it does not do that and the way that law enforcement functions is it creates harm to those in poverty, it creates harm to black people, it creates harm to, to people on the margins all over. And it, they work for the haves, yet create havoc for the have-nots. So we have to demand um, a better system, and we have to demand a better system that works for us by any means necessary. And we're in a moment right now where we see, you know, and understand what means might be necessary because we've been um, screaming for a long time now. Uh, for us to be able to breathe, for our lives to matter. You know, we've tried uh, and continue to try every single type of protest. I mean, we've, we've taken a knee at football games like Kaepernick. We've worn I Can't Breathe shirts. We motorcade around, you know, for to create awareness. We march, you know, we write our Congress people. We interact with our city council members and try to talk to our mayor. And on every single level, I've tried to, and the people I work with, the Community Solidarity Response Network, has tried to work with local, county, state, and even federal officials to try to create policy to make our lives, to make it so that we can walk around in our society in America, in Toledo, in Ohio, like our lives matter. And we've yet to see that 
translate into uh, and manifest itself into uh, an actual reality. We heard some stuff today where they talked about maybe adding more um, African Americans into the police force, that kind of thing. In your eyes, in your mind, <coughs> excuse me, what are some of these actions that you would like done? Can you list a few actions that you think we could do here in Toledo, even just? Yeah, absolutely. So the, it's an issue of power, right? And um, this thin blue line was created by law enforcement officers, uh, not by citizens, uh, to designate the power that they have that's different than citizens. Uh, so what we have to do is create accountability, structural change, not surface level, right? While I do think we would benefit off of having more people that look like me in law enforcement. Um, the lack of accountability is still there, right? The permission to be able to um, move and act and commit crimes with impunity because of that thin blue line still exists. So we need accountability. There are structural rules that can change. Um, one, and, and, and the overarching theme is the police department has too much power and we need to return that power back to the citizens that they serve, right? Somehow, at some point, some would say it's always been this way or it's designed to be this way. Um, officers got too much power. And we see when you have too much power, you have individuals who abuse that power. And then collectively as an institution, they abuse that power. We need to put that power back in the hands of the citizens that they serve. So a civilian review board, one that has oversight over the police, one that can hold police accountable. Uh, the problem is we can't have police, 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 right? That is a three strikes rule that does not work and it's been proven time and time over again. We have to have citizens in the community, the people who they actually serve, be held accountable. Um, and hold police accountable, you know. So, um, civilian review board one. Uh, two, there are some issues with the police union contract, um, where, uh, for example, uh, they have entirely too much time to, uh, or if they commit some sort of misconduct, for example, um, within two years, or after two years, it can be deleted. Um, from their file. Now, if we're serious about getting rid of bad actors, we have to be serious about uh, looking at records for police officers and eliminating trouble ones out of the system. Right? So, uh, so yeah, also use of force. Right? There, I mean, there's a whole other... Earlier today, I emailed the the mayor, a uh, 10 point platform called Campaign Zero um, for him to implement um, for uh, police reform. All of these are best practices and policies um, from across the country. Um, but use of force, there's some things I want, I think can be done uh, immediately, right? Like we can ban chokeholds, right? We can. Um, you can make it el eligible for a complaint if uh, a police does not de-escalate a situation. Right? They should be mandated to de-escalate situations to the people that they serve. Um, anytime there is use of force, that should be recorded and that should be measured, right? So we can track the officers that are having use of force problems and issues. And that can either be corrected or those people can find another field to work in. Do you feel that some of that overuse of force, when you're talking about that, are you just talking about police in general or are you talking about situations? I'm talking about Toledo Police Department. That is a policy, right? They, there's a use of force. Uh, uh, use of force is, is one of the 10 um, points on a 10 point platform. It's one of, it's one of the 10 points on a 10 point platform use of force uh, that can help minimize police violence. Um, there is protocol when an officer engages in a use of force. 
Um, what we need to do is is relook at that protocol because obviously it's faulty, right? There, you can talk to you know thousands of people in the city of Toledo that can tell you that from firsthand experience. I mean, you can look at other police departments that have enacted use of force limitations and restrictions and checks and balances that work better. Why are we not using the best practices that we've seen now, right? The time is now. The time was yesterday. The time was past already. But there must be an urgency of elected officials, of leadership, of the mayor, um, to act on structural change that puts the power back into the community. Period. And speaking of the community, what do you guys have going on tomorrow? I'm told there's some type of protest. What are you guys having going on and why are you guys doing that and what do you guys want out of that? Right, so people are hurting. Um, legitimately hurting. Right, we have been, our communities have been and our minds, our hearts, and our souls have been terrorized. The images um, and the actions of the United States of America, time and time is still here. People need to be able to air out those grievances. People need to be able to speak truth to power and, and, and about solutions that need to happen. Um, we need to create a space for us to grow, for us to bond, and for us to uh, set the table to make the transformative institutional change that needs to happen for these institutions to actually serve us, right? And so at 3 o'clock tomorrow, we'll be meeting uh, to, we'll be meeting at 3 o'clock right here. and. You know, we're going to um, we're going to make it clear that we demand accountability, right? We're going to make it clear that we demand limits of use of force and all types of policy. But we also want to create a space, right, where people uh, can express their frustration, their legitimate frustration with the system that is not only not serving us like it should, but is literally killing us. And that's. That's, that's, that's necessary at a time. What are you encouraging people? I know the mayor today talked about, very adamant about trying to keep these protests peaceful. We haven't seen that in other places. Do you think that the protests here can be kept peaceful? Do you think that people will be angry? What do you think is going to happen? What do you want from your community? What are you asking for? I want my community to speak truth to power. Um, I think it can be peaceful. Um, I hope it, you know, I have aspirations of it being peaceful. Right? In no way, shape, or form do I want to feed more, feed the prison industrial complex more bodies, which is something that is another inherent systematic institutional problem with this country. Um, I think that the uprising actions that we've seen in Columbus, Minneapolis, Louisville, LA, and all across the country got our mayor's attention. I think he want, I think he's listening a little more today than he would have a week ago. You know, and so I expect people to show up tomorrow um, ready to speak that truth to power. Um, ready to speak that truth to power um, because unfortunately we've had to face some hard truths during this time and many of those in power don't want to confront those truths and I've personally experienced as an activist seeing elected officials run from that truth the time from running from the truth of the painful truth of what America is, is now over. We have to face it and
and change it. Give us liberty. What would you have done during the Revolutionary War? What would you have done during the Civil War? What would you have done during the Great Depression? What would you have done during the Civil Rights Movement? What side would you have been on? You have an opportunity to not just talk the talk, but to walk the walk tomorrow and continue to every day forward. This is a moment where people have to choose a side of, of justice. There is a right or wrong in this situation. There is a good or bad in this situation. And just like there was with the Civil Rights Movement, slavery, and the Revolutionary War, we have that moment again. And I encourage people to think about um, what, their, what their descendants will say of them when the history books are written about this triumph. Let me grab let me grab a shot of your shirt if you don't mind. Oh. I couldn't leave. <laughs> <laughs>